let's try the problem with coefficient of performance. So we got a lot of information here, but don't worry, we can figure this out. So it says a refrigerator is used to cool water from 23 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees Celsius. First off, just gonna let you know, this is where we're gonna figure out how much cooling we're doing. For cooling water, we know it has a mass, we can figure out the mass probably. We know the specific heat of water, we can find the heat. It's doing that in a continuous manner, that's nice, okay. The heat rejected in the condenser is 605 kilojoules per minute, and the power is 2.65 kilowatts. Determine the rate at which water is cooled in liters per minute and the coefficient of performance of the refrigerator. And it gives us some values here. So let's get right to it. First off, let's figure out that coefficient performance equation. So in this case, it's a refrigerator. So what's my desired cooling? Once again, that's gonna be coming from here and then figure out how much power it took to do that. Now, I don't have that desired cooling yet, but I can figure it out. So let's go to conservation of energy. So the change in energy in my system with time is equal to my net heat output minus my net work output. So net heat input minus my net work output. Now this is a cycle, so it means that those two are equal because the change in energy in my system will always be zero. And so if I look at this, I can read out right a little bit more. I know what my network input is. There is no network output. I know what my heat input is, sorry, heat output is. And so therefore I should be able to solve for my heat input. So my heat input is gonna simply be equal to my heat output minus my work input. Okay, not too terrible here, not too terrible at all. So if I plug that in, I get 7.43 kilowatts. I did have to make one conversion here because I had kilojoules per minute and kilowatts is kilojoules per second. So I did have to convert that from minutes to seconds. So that's how much heat is being input from the water to the refrigerant, okay? From the water to the refrigerant. And so because of that, I can get my coefficient performance. It's 2.8. Is that good? It's passable. There's definitely way better refrigerators. Now, how much water is actually cooled? Remember, my working fluid in this case is the refrigerant, um, but the water is what I'm cooling here. That's why I get, I can figure out how much water is cooled by looking at how much heat has been taken and the temperature dropped. So, if we go back to that equation we had from chapter one, which is simply saying that heat is equal to mass, specific heat, times the change in temperature. And because it's happening over time, it's a mass flow rate. I have those changes in temperature. I have the mass flow, or sorry, I have the specific heat, and I have my heat input. This is enough to solve this. So I rearrange, and I get the mass flow rate is 0 0.0988 kilograms per second. Now, it asked for liters per minute, so I'm going to have to figure that out in a second. But I got kilograms per second for now. Things to be careful, right, careful with right here. One, the temperature. If I wanted to, I can convert that to Kelvin. And I would have gotten the exact same answer. I've got 300 minus 278, which is still 22. I can't do math. <laughs> Sorry, that should have been 270 or 296. There you go totally blood and so that would be 18 there we go that's good sorry I'm used to room temperature problems I just defaulted to that in my mind there we go I can't do math so it's the same Delta T regardless whether it's in Kelvin or Celsius however be very careful though because if I ever say well what is MCP T as if I'm trying to figure out the enthalpy then you cannot do that. This has to be in absolute units. So if you're worried about forgetting that, just always put in absolute units. If you're not worried about forgetting that, then you don't have to, it'll be fine. Okay, so we have our mass flow rate right here. That looks good. But we need to get it to liters per minute. Now, the thing to realize is that liters is volume. So what's asking for there is a volume flow rate. 
or how to connect mass flow rate and volume flow rate through density. Because after all, density is equal to mass over volume. And so if I rearrange, I can get that volume is equal to mass over density. I know the density of water in kilograms per liters. And I wanted to get it to minutes, so I know that there's 60 seconds in a minute. And with that, I get my answer. It's 5.928 liters per minute. And that's it. We have our answer. We have our coefficient of performance. We have our volume flow rate. And the problem is done. So just remember, for these problems, don't let it confuse you. Um, the biggest thing is just what is my coefficient performance equation? Is some sort of heat being moved over the power it took to do that or the energy it took to do that? If you can remember that, you can solve all these problems. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.